Welcome back to the Realm of Unpopular Opinions and today as you can see by the title is vlog one of three for the Grisha trilogy. I think the last time I read this book was almost two years ago. These books. I think like spring of 2019 and that is a crime because 2020 felt like a couple decades at least so I feel like it's been ages. And today we'll be starting off with Shadow and Bone. I This is the only one I have in hardcover, so I wanted to actually read it in hardcover. So I won't tab this one. I might tab the other two. We'll see. But in any case, we're starting with Shadow and Bone, which as an intro is my least favorite in the series. In my opinion, it gets better by the book. So we're going to start off not bad, but very YA. <laughs> That's how I would describe this book, very YA, which is clear considering when it came out. I am still so excited. I can't wait to go back to this world. And this is, of course, because the show is coming out soon. So I need to refresh myself. And these vlogs will be spoiler filled. Just a warning. I will put it in the title so you can also be reminded of certain things through the vlog if you don't feel like reading it again or if you just want to have fun watching me reread a favorite of mine. So yeah definitely full spoilers and I am so excited to get into it so excited I've been feeling slumpy and I'm hoping this will drag me out of it because this is literally one of my favorites it's probably stupid to say but I forgot this was in first person I haven't read a book in first person in so long in so long I forgot this was in first person I was reading the prologue and that was all fine and then it started standing on the edge of a crowded road I looked down on the rolling fields and abandoned farms of the Tula Valley I forgot this was in first person this is just embarrassing I mean of course it is all of YA was in first person back then but I'm just so excited this feels like going home to me I the when the Grisha come to examine them it feels like going home to me like the world and how everything works and the Grisha of course fills me with such joy it's like a homecoming but let's just read on because the darkling appears very very early on which i was so satisfied with when i read it for the first time i love how subtle she is with the hints like when they're talking and mal is like the sun can shine once more and how when they were reading a book about volcra they were scared and then ran out into the safety of the sunlight I love it. If you can't tell, I mean, even though this is the weakest book for me, I'm so excited to be back here. I miss them. I miss them all so much. Yeah, the Darkling just almost trampled her, so that is where we're at. <laughs> I, this is basically just going to be me gushing. I, yeah. See? i sorry, I just scrolled past. Yeah, The Darkling shows up in like 20 pages. So let's just keep reading. I need to stop rambling about how excited I am. Considering we all know what we know, the sentence, it was a Darkling who made the shadow fold to begin with. That was hundreds of years ago, protested Alexei, and that Darkling was completely mad. This one is just as bad. I mean, Alexander, <laughs> you're killing it in the rumor department. Apparently all of the Darklings are insane. Like, so much for damage control. <laughs> he just, I guess, picks a new identity and is like, okay, this one isn't insane. I just love him. I love him so much. I understand, but I love him. She just exploded into light. I love that scene with all of my damn heart. Because this book, in my opinion, is on the verge of being very cliche. But then she somehow breaks free of that. I remember reading it and I was like, okay, this is going to go like this. This is going to go like this. But it never does. It. I love her. I love, love Lee. But before she rescues Malin, he's like, I'll meet you in the meadow. That hurt me a little bit. It hurt. Even though I know everything that's going to happen, it hurt. But now she's going to the Darkling's tent and we both 
you and me watching know that I'm gonna have comments about that. Getting there, we're getting there. I had a very bad feeling about where I was being taken. It can't be, I thought desperately. It makes no sense. But as the huge black tent loomed larger and larger before us, there could be no doubt about where we were going. I am so excited. <laughs> I waited, my heart racing. You and me both, Alina. <laughs> I'm just gonna hold the clip until the Darkling shows up. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. <laughs> there he is, there he is. At the head of the table was an ornately carved high back chair of blackest ebony and upon it lounged a finger figure in a black kefta. <laughs> he is here. I'm just imagining these scenes in the show with Ben Barnes. And I am just getting chills. I don't know why about the sentence, then he crossed his arms, cocked his head to one side. Why does that sound so attractive to me? I remember the first time I read this book, I was enthralled. Well, he said, his voice bemused, I like to think that I know everything that happens in Ravka, and that if I had a sun summoner living in my own country, I'd be aware of it. And the fact that he looks like he's repressing a smile. Alexander, you beautiful, beautiful, slightly crazy bastard. No, she's so scared. He's literally just like, hold out your arm. And she's like, I didn't do anything. Leave me alone. He spread his arms and terror washed through me as I saw his palms filling with something black that pooled and curled through the air like ink and water. I, I hope they do this scene right because it sets the tone so well when they're in the tent and this exchange and the first time they meet and how, what his power looks like, like ink through water. I can't wait to see Ben Bars doing that. And when he br brings his hands together and it sounds like a thunderclap. I love his power so much, so, so much. I cried out in terror as I felt the Darkling's fingers close around my bare wrist. Suddenly, my fear receded. It was still there, cringing like an animal inside me, but it had been pushed aside by something calm and sure and powerful, something vaguely familiar. If you've read The Demon in the Wood, every mention of him being an amplifier hurts. Just a little. And now he's literally talking to her power. She's trying to push it down, but he's like, nothing there. Mm. Not so fast, he whispered. Like how her power is just coming to his call because he's an amplifier. I'm sorry that I've been gushing for like three minutes at this point. I love this scene so much and I hope it's done well in the show.
and with his touch went that peculiar sense of certainty that had possessed me. My legs gave way and the darkling caught me up against his body with one surprisingly strong arm. <sighs> the fact that she got Ben Barnes to do this role is honestly incredible. Lee, I think you've won adaptations forever. Even if it sucks, I think you've won and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for the service. <laughs> This entire scene is just just perfection. I can't wait to see it in the show. I will likely cry if it looks good. Probably. Just just in awe. Sorry, it's been like a page. I can't stop talking about this, but when she grabs his arm and everyone's shocked. There are so many characters like that that like when you touch them, it's like no no, a big no no. My voice trailed off as the darkling turned slowly towards me, his slate eyes drifting to where my hand gripped his sleeve. <laughs> He's literally just like, Excuse me, no one touches me. I'll kindly let go. I will only be touched when I will be faking a seduction. I, I couldn't help myself. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And the power of the line, Ivan called the Darkling, mind your tone, she is Grisha now. <laughs> this is my shit. This is my shit. I know no one likes it, but this is my shit. And I am finally, finally somewhere where I want to be. They're in the coach now, which I love, but how he's literally like, I can't explain that, but it wasn't my doing. The Darkling did something when he touched me. Ivan laughed. Didn't do anything. Has an amplifier. <laughs> A what? <laughs> Forget it. I don't care. I love Alina. Unpopular, but I love Alina. I love her snark. Is that the right word? Her snark and the sarcasm. I genuinely love her as a character. And that was, I think, the first time that I ever read a YA where I loved the protagonist. I mean, clearly, because it's me. I love no one more than Alexander. But, but Alina, I adore her. She might be one of my favorite female protagonists in a story ever. I love everything she does. Almost. Almost everything, but I love her. This is just going to be an unpopular opinions galore vlog because no one agrees with me on that front. I'm going to say this sarcastically, but the beauty of this scene when they're fighting on the hill against the Fiertans and the Darkling saves her. I know a lot of the powers seem more attractive in the beginning because you don't know that other people can do them too so he seems really unique with more than one power which he is but how he's slashing his hands when he's doing the cut he cut the man into no blinking like mm. but her reaction is what i love what i absolutely love all of the time there's strange reactions but she immediately like is scared like hell. She's shaking. I think she maybe throws up and stuff. <clears throat> and how he's commanding her to look at him. This entire scene, like the beginning, we're, we're 60 pages in and I feel like it went by in a blink. I feel like I blinked. And we're already into the, into the thing. And now she's gonna ride with him on the horse. I'm sorry. Literally, this is the easiest book to read in the history of time. It happens very rarely, but Lee managed to get me to care and be interested so that I read 60 pages with literally no problem. And the rest of the books are like, like this too. Except in book two, when they're with Nikolai for a little while, I don't remember ever ever having a boring moment reading these and that's that's honestly a success congratulations because with most YA there was there's always like a side plot or a romantic bullshit 
along the way that I just scoff at. Here, even though she has romance, it's very much in the background. Plot-wise, it's very much in the background. It is ever-present, but she never focuses on it so much that you're unable to read. If you get what I'm trying to say, I'm a little bit all over the place. But basically, I love how easy these books are to read, and I hope it cures my slump because I am having the best time. So you do make mistakes, I said without thinking. He paused in the act of pulling on his gloves. Why does this, this is, why does this guy seem so dedicated to his aesthetic? Like, I love it. I absolutely love it. But he has to have a black coach, a black tent, a black horse, black gloves, black outfits. I wonder what his room looks like. I mean, I don't remember now. But, like, I imagine everything being black and then someone delivers him a white shirt and he's, like, disgusting. <laughs> he's so dedicated to the aesthetic and honestly, same. But yeah, I was reading it out and like when he, she's, so you do make mistakes. Of course I make mistakes, he said. His mouth curved into a half smile. It's just not often. <gasps> mm. <laughs> oh, damn. I can't. I can't. I love him so much. It's the attitude for me. Maybe it's just, I'm not sure what it is about villains that makes them so attractive. Considering this is a book. It's not necessarily his looks, but just the attitude of someone who knows you're more powerful than everyone else is so attractive. Maybe not to you, but it is to me every single time. Mm, I'm going to read it out because this is beautiful. When they're writing and he's like, you're shaking. I'm not used to people trying to kill me, really. I hardly notice anymore. That trace of a smile was still there, but I wasn't entirely sure he was joking. Believe me, honey, he's not. The Darkling switched his reins to one hand and pulled off one of his gloves. I need to get my head out of the gutter. Why is everything he does attractive to me? I stiffened as I felt him slide his bare palm under my hair and rest it at the, on the nape of my neck. And how... Just how his touch calms people down... Power and surety. With one hand cupping my head, he kicked the horse into a canter. She f falls asleep. Like, they're riding on a horse. And all he does is place a hand on the nape of her neck. And she, like, just falls into him and falls asleep. And he can ride like that. Of course he can. Not a problem. <sighs> Everything was so simple in the beginning. And this man didn't have nine lives here. Because... It's funny to me how he dies at the end of every book, but he sort of doesn't. It's like a thing with him now, but in the beginning, which is the point, I realize he's, everything he does is just powerful. But I do love that part of his power. And I definitely get why they wanted to kill him for it, but how literally with just a touch of his hand, they calm down and fear, feel reassured and powerful and it hurts me it hurts me a lot it hurts me a lot remembering the demon in the wood which we will get to in vlog three next paragraph in the <laughs> in the series word porn um what are you smiling at i whirled peering into the gloom the darkling's voice seemed to float out of the shadows he walked down to the stream, crouching on the bank to splash water on his face and through his dark hair. Well, he asked, looking up at me. Myself, I admitted. Are you that funny? I'm hilarious. <sighs> Their banter is just unparalleled. It's even better somehow when she realizes what he wants from her. Why? Why? <laughs> Why is the dynamic between the protagonist and the villain always the best one? Like, you don't have to ship them, you don't have to like the villain. But why is the banter always the best between the protagonist and the villain? I don't know why. Like, nothing she could talk about with the rest of the good guys can match the few conversation where she talks to Alexander. 
nothing absolutely nothing in these books comes close to when the two of them just talk and yeah i'm sorry i am a person who actually likes mal but nothing can come close to them shook his head and rose. You don't understand at all, he said, and began walking back up the hill. Are you going to explain it to me? Not right now, no. I was so furious I wanted to smack him on the back of his head. And if I hadn't seen him cut a man in half, I might have done just that. I settled for glaring at the space between his shoulder blades as I followed him up the hill. On <laughs> like, unparalleled, unstoppable, beautiful, sensational... Yes, thank you. Like, in just a page of dialogue and interaction, I would die for them. He literally asks her if he's, she's funny. She answers sarcastically and, are you going to explain it to me? No. No, I'm not. I guess it's also, yeah, the trope of the main character being the only one not being scared of the villain. That's what makes it so good. That's what makes it so good when they talk back and the villain is enjoying the fact that someone's talking back. It's a classic. It's one of the oldest tricks in the book, but it works for a reason. Time for a conversation, an actual conversation. He, even though he has certain tendencies, is actually a great leader. I understand how funny that sounds, but... The Grisha, who I consider his his soldiers, he sits with them, he respects them, he gives his best for them, he protects them, he doesn't take more food than them, he treats them like equals, and he sits with them on the cold ground, as she says. Since the beginning of his story, he has been trying to secure a world where they would all be equal and where the Grisha wouldn't have to claw for power and <laughs> I can't, I can't help but absolutely respect what he's doing in some regard. He will veer off course a little murderously but but you can't tell me that his reasoning is isn't sound because He's so good to them and there's a reason why there's a whole backstory why he wants to do for them what he wants to do for them his rage just took on something that turned into something he couldn't stop and it makes me sad it makes me extremely sad because when controlled I think he could have been literally the most powerful weapon for the Grisha and for their position in the world and instead he only brought their reputation down in a way and that's extremely sad because of how good he is with them and how much they do actually respect him they also fear him but they also respect him a lot and you can tell he doesn't have their loyalty because he's caring them he actually has their loyalty because he does have their best interests at heart he just doesn't have the interests of anyone else at heart but I love it. From the beginning, you can tell that he's not just evil for the sake of it. He was never evil for the sake of it, and I respect that so much. You can disagree all you want, but that is just my analogy. And how they're drinking, and he's just dramatically next to her, and he's like, all right, ask me whatever you want. And the first thing she asks is, how old are you? Which, frankly, Lee was probably just like, people are going to be wondering anyway, so let's just ask. He glanced at me, bemused. Don't know exactly. How can you not know? He shrugged. How old are you exactly? Well, then, how roughly how old are you? Why do you want to know? Because I've heard stories about you since I was a child, but you don't look much older than I am. What kind of stories? The usual kind, I said with some annoyance. If you don't want to answer me, just say so. I don't want to answer you. Oh. I, their dynamic is everything to me. Then he sighed and said, 120, give or take. <laughs> Alexander, when you say give or take, you mean like 
four to six years. <laughs> Not about a thousand. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 120, what, times eight. That's how old I am. It's still so weird to me, though. I mean, this is going to be, like, a bit of a criticism. When she's like, uh, using our power makes us stronger, it feeds us instead of consuming us, most Greece shall live long lives. But not 120 years. No, he admitted. The greater the power, the longer the life. But if he looks barely older than her and 120... And Grisha don't live until 120. I mean, it's just a little bit strange what she said up here. 120 isn't that much. If he had said like 220, that would have been a lot. But he's like, no, most don't live until 120. Then what's considered a longer life? Like, people can live until the age of 100, normal people. So how is it strange that he's 120? Like, it would be weird for Grisha to live 120 years. I feel like she just gave it too, too small a number. Especially considering he looks barely older than her. That should be an indication that he has a lot more to live. But the Grisha aren't really that... Yeah, they don't live that much longer if 120 isn't a number that a Grisha has ever reached. I think she just made a mistake here. I think it should have been a higher number. Definitely a higher number. This just does not add up. I won't talk as much. I'll do my best. But that my bones or a few of my teeth would make another Grisha very pow powerful, he says. Again, flashbacks. I'd rather not have. That's completely creepy. Doesn't that worry you a little bit? No, he said simply. I mean, fair. Why would that worry him? After a thousand years, I don't think anyone could get within one foot of him without dying, so. And his vain little ass wants to know what stories she has heard about him. I mean, I get that he's already trying to impress her here, but... They said you were the strongest darkling in generations. I didn't ask you for flattery. <laughs> My great-great-great-grandfather was a black heretic. Sure he was. It was a mistake. An experiment born of his greed. Maybe evil. I don't know. I spent my life searching for a way to make things right. You're the first glimmer of hope I've had in a long time. Another sad thought, because I think that's true not in the way she thinks. She's the first glimmer of hope he's had for himself. Because if he looks at himself, I think he's sort of, sort of, so, I mean, you can't live a thousand years without doing that. I think he's already sort of detached the different ages of his life because he's able to talk casually about the black heretic as someone else, someone who was greedy and stupid and maybe evil. And now he is untry trying to undo the mistakes in theory, even though he wants to spread out the fold, but he also, I think, just thinks, reading between the lines, that she could be the hope for him that he's been waiting for a long, long time. And that's just the fan in me talking, but I think it does make a lot of sense. He is scared that the Grisha are gonna be even worse off than when he was a child, and he's gonna do everything he can. Not to let that happen, but if he has a light in his life, both literally and to fight off the fold, then he can control the power of the fold. Unlike last time when he was quote-unquote greedy and maybe possibly evil. So he does crave a sort of control that he hasn't had before. And even though he wants to spread out the fold, I think he definitely wants a way to control it. To not let it get out of his hands again. 
And I love that so much. We love a complex character. And I cannot stop talking about him. I understand that. I'll try and talk less. I think the second half of the book I'll have less, less comments, but apologize. I apologize. <laughs> Me again. Yes. When there are characters, you could like argue that they're very good actors, but I don't, I, I don't think that anyone is capable of acting all the time, especially someone this old. I think there's a lot of truth in actually what he's saying and he never lies to her for a reason. But when he asks her, would it have been different if I'd cut the man down with a sword? And she says, I don't know. Something flashed across his face. Something that looked like anger or maybe even pain. He's a darkling. He's the second most powerful man in Ravka. You didn't hurt his feelings. And then she says something that's beautiful. Yeah, the look that flickered over his features. A shame in his voice when he talked about the black heretic. It literally confirms what I just said. I think he's definitely battling with himself. And over a long life, that will make a lot of sense. That he's detached himself from that part of him. Genuine shame on his face when he thinks about what he did. And how he is a little bit hurt. When she is scared of him, I think he de really, really wanted her to be on his side without him having to force her hand. I will die believing that. I will die on that hill that he wanted Alina at his side without actually having to threaten her. But of course, we wouldn't have a plot that way, would we? <laughs> I'm sure there's fan fiction somewhere where she calms him down and they're just powerful together and I would have loved to see it, but yeah, that's not the book we got. I'm completely satisfied with what we got because Lee is a master, but the potential there, it would have been very very interesting to see yeah i love it i love it so much uh, nearly 100 pages in and i'm already in love with something that i knew i was already in love with this contempt for people regular people not grisha bleeds out of every single thing he does literally bleeds how hurt he seemed when he was talking about the fact that machines and guns and stuff is taking over because the Grisha power is coming to an end. I cannot help but actually support his decision to spread the fold. I think it's bad because he's gonna kill innocents, not the people who deserve it, but I understand it. I completely understand it. If you're a magic person and all your life magic has just been quenched, not quenched, quelched, I don't even know what word I'm going for here. I am it's late but I would also want to actually keep keep the power there for everyone who's like me for everyone who's different and how he asks her what do you think of the city that's full of gold and she isn't that impressed and he's a little smile playing on his lips I think it's the ugliest building I've ever seen and how he hates the king I remember that now they're gonna come to the king and he's gonna despise the king I absolutely support the Darkling, but he really should have directed his power elsewhere. That's the problem every single time. You agree with the villain, but they start with the innocents. <laughs> Why do they always start with the innocents? I want to support you. You're not helping your cause. Her interaction with Genya is the absolute funniest thing ever because I adore Genya so much. But how she's literally like, do you like the way you look? Genya asked with what seemed to be genuine curiosity. Not particularly, I snapped. <laughs> I've perfected myself, but I've had my whole life to do it, Genya says. I wanted to argue, but she was actually perfect. Get out. <laughs> Alina is such a mood, and she didn't want to climb stairs after riding for a long time. Alina is such a mood, and I think that's why I literally love her. Adore her. Love her. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Why are you taking this so personally, wouldn't you? I have no idea. I've always been beautiful and humble, too. Love her with all my heart. When they're about to walk into the hall and they're all fighting over who she gets to walk with. And like, they're like, you need I remind you that the Darkling is a summoner, so you're ranking himself with him now. He literally just doesn't even need to announce himself. He's just, she'll walk with me. Said a low voice and the room went silent. Why is it always a low voice? Can his voice like be a little bit squeaky? I get he needs to be perfect for the sake of the story, but 
And they got Ben Barnes to do him. I mean, who is, who of a sound mind is supposed to hate him when he looks and sounds like that? It's rude. It's frankly rude. Stop. It reminds me of that TikTok. Stop making your villains hot because they will fall in love with you. I was not going to comment on the scene where they're demonstrating for the king, even though it's incredible, but I need to shut up about it. I'm not even 100 pages in. But I simply died of laughter when the king claps the darkling on the back. Like, Alexander has lived through probably like a thousand kings. Less, of course, but a lot of kings. And he hates all of them and the fact that he has to serve them. But one clapping him on the back is just so rude and funny at the same time. If I was a thousand years old and I had to serve a king to make my way in the world and he clapped me on the back, I would be insulted too. <laughs> Dear Lord. But yeah, just... <laughs> <laughs> now she's gonna meet everyone and then she, soon she's gonna go training and we get to meet Bagra and whew, I am just reminded by how much I love every single part of this world it makes me feel warm and comfortable inside because it's lovely it's lovely I love it so much the way she crafted it makes it truly on the verge of being a complete cliche, but at the same time, something wonderfully unique. And I love her for it. Anywho, uh, just, we have to mention this, but when he orders that her kefta be black, with, like, it isn't fair. I understand why she didn't want to stand out and why she wanted the kefta to be white I mean blue white blue and I know she gets a black after later even though she hates it but oh my god the power she would have had in a black kefta with gold gold rimmed edges oh my god I just want Alina in the black kefta that's too much to ask I know the blue one is pretty much how I think of her now, but oh my god, she would have been gorgeous in a black kefta. Everyone looks prettier in black. <laughs> Genya, the Darkling called after us. The kefta, the kefta will be black. Wait, I called before I could stop myself. The Darkling halted and turned those sleek colored eyes on me. I, if it would be all right, I'd prefer to have. Blue robes, summoner's blue. Alina, exclaimed Genya, clearly horrified. You and me both, Genya. She would have been gorgeous in black. But the Darkling held up a hand to silence her. Why, he asked, his expression unreadable. I already feel like I don't belong here. I think it might be easier if I weren't singled out. Are you so anxious to be like everyone else? He clearly didn't approve. I just don't want to be more conspicuous than I already am. Alina, I don't approve either. Everyone already knows you're unique. Please wear the black kefta. I know you're not going to, but I know there is fan out, out there somewhere where they're both in black and I love it. Abruptly, he nodded. As you wish, he said. Your kefta will be blue. And without another word, he turned his back on us and disappeared down the hall. Genya stared at me, aghast. What? I said defensively. Alina, Genya said slowly. No other Grisha has ever been per permitted to wear a Darkling's colors. Do you think he's angry? That's hardly the point. It would have been a mark of your standing of the Darkling's esteem. It would have placed you high above all others. I understand she doesn't want to be high above all others, but imagine her in black. The power she would have had. I mean, Lee knew that if Alina was in black too, the shippers would just never shut up, and Lee was right. Haven't commented in a while, actually. I refrained, but... When Genya tells her that she would have looked better in black, I absolutely agree. Right. As I was saying before I was cut off, <laughs> when Genya tells her she would have looked better in black, I absolutely agree. But she's going to go meet Bagra now, and we, we all know I have to comment on that. Bagra is the queen, and I can't wait to see her in the show. I can't believe they got Ben Barnes to be the Darkling and Madame Hooch to be his mother. I think it's iconic and Lee absolutely wins adaptations. Hands down, she wins. I can't wait to get to the scene and I will definitely comment on that. I'm all scared to death of Bagra and frankly, I don't blame you. She's 
immortal. But how Genya is literally like, Genya gave me a pitying look. Bogger's not so bad once you get used to her, but you don't want to be late. Yeah, because that's a problem. You're late, said a harsh voice. Ah, uh, this is the mother of the Darkling, and they're both so iconic that I can't help but adore them. I didn't see anyone in the tiny room, then one of the shadows moved. Shut the door, girl, you're letting the heat out. Bagra is literally me when I turn the heat on in my room. I love her so much. I don't know why I always picture her as an old woman. Like as a bony old bony old woman, even though she apparently looks young. I always picture her as an old woman. I don't know why. <laughs> apparently she looks like an acrobat. bony hand snaked out from the sleeve of her robes and fastened hard around my wrist. Now, she said, let's see what you can do. A, that is absolutely iconic and a wonderful introduction to her character. And B, this is going to sound a bit funny, but she has black hair. She looks ancient and she's also an amplifier. I don't think it would take a genius to connect the dots and figure out that she is in some way, at least related to the Darkling. I don't think anyone knows that she's his mother. I'm not sure, at least. Yeah, I don't think anyone knows that they're related, and in my opinion, it's a little bit obvious. I mean, not that many people are living amplifiers, and the two that happen to look similarly ancient, though young and black-haired, are both amplifiers. Like, it doesn't take a genius, does it? I mean, we know Alexander has a flair for the dramatics, but... He sends Ivan to her in front of everyone else, then forces him to say please, and then to drag her to his rooms. He is so extra. He could have just gotten her afterward, but no. Also, how he keeps mention she keeps mentioning his quartz eyes. God damn it, why did it have to be so attractive? Gray eyes with black hair, like Lee. I understand villains need to be attractive, but it's rude. I hesitated. He didn't, he didn't sound angry. Alina, after a thousand years... I'm pretty sure he knows how to manage his emotions. <laughs> how she croaks when he asks her how her first day was. Really, he asked, but he was smiling slightly. Even Bagra, she can be a bit of a trial. Just a bit. <clears throat> a bit of a trial, yeah. That's your mother, honey. <laughs> you would know. It will be harder for you, he said, and at the all Nick rarely works alone, and Fernie pair up. Squallers often partner with tide makers, but you're the only one of your kind. You could have paired up with him, but no, the story didn't go that way. I am just a little, little bit bitter. <clears throat> Did he literally just, yeah, I was just going to comment, why did he get her to his room just to ask how her day was? And she, she literally follows my train of thought. That's why I love her so much. She's the best protagonist. I want to follow her. That's it? You just want to ask me about my day? He cocked his head to one side. Stop doing that, Lee. Please stop doing that. What were you expecting? Torture? Interrogation? A stern talking to? He frowned slightly. I'm not a monster, Alina, despite what you may have heard. Well, she 
she's the only one who's honest with him. And I am living for it. Why shouldn't I be afraid of you? You're the Darkling. I'm not saying you would throw me in a ditch or ship me off to Zibaya, but you certainly could. You can cut people in half. I think it's fair to be a little intimidated. I love them, I love them, I love them, I love them. And when he reaches out and takes her hand and she feels that wonderful sense of surety. This is just, again, my head in the gutter, but if only touching his hand makes you feel like that. I think we all know where I'm going with this. <laughs> we need to keep the video PG, but then imagine more than hand touching. Uh, Alexander, considering that you're distracting her by touching her hand, could you please, like, stop? You need to actually get information out of her. The fact that he bows a little for her, I absolutely know that here he's already very much trying to get her to like him. But I think that subconsciously he really, really wanted her to like him. He was kind, polite, nice to her, actually respectful, maybe a little bit seductive a bit later on, but I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure it was half, half trickery and half he really felt like he had found his own hope, as I said before, so he was genuinely trying. That's the wonderful duality of well-written villains even when they're acting and trying to gain something that they want it feels like they're really breaking through the surface and you can see their pain underneath and their hope and yeah that is actually heartbreaking but here we are here we are just me wishing for alina in a dark kefta and the two of them pairing up i'm not sure if we ever see them fighting together together i don't think we do but oh my god I would have probably exploded if there was a scene like that. I know they won't do it in the show because they won't change anything, but... Yeah, I'm just <laughs> stuck wishing for a cool scene with the two of them fighting side by side, back to back. This is an interesting detail that for some reason connects to A Language of Thorns and the side story there with his sister, so to say. But... I, where did she say it? I learned from the other Grisha that he wasn't often at the little palace, but spent mo most of his time traveling between the fold and the northern border. Or southward, the Shuhan raiding parties were attacking settlements before winter set in. Hundreds of Grisha were stat th stationed throughout Ravka, and he was responsible for all of them. So he's literally going around and being with his troops. I need to make it clear... <sighs> that I completely stand behind him until the innocent murders. Because his cause and his drive is something that I absolutely support. He's fighting for the Grisha, essentially. I know he's also looking for the stag, but he will send the trackers to do it. So basically all his life he's just going around and being with those troops. And I think that's very cool of him. This is the first mention of Istori Sanctia or the lives of saints in the book. And considering I actually have the lives of saints now, I think it would be fun to actually get the book. And when she's flipping through it and reading something, I just get Istori Sanctia and actually read it. I think that'd be a cool addition because it's so fun when you have a book that's constantly referenced within a book. I keep forgetting I have it for some reason, but I actually have the lives of saints now. I think it'd be very cool so if she starts reading through it i'm gonna get that book and flip flip through it as she does i think that'd be so cool because i'm not sure if i will ever read that book as a book it's not that fascinating it's just saints but it'd be very cool to read it parallel to alina if that made any sense it kind of sounds stupid now that i hear it back but i think i'll do that if she mentions it again very soon i'm gonna go get it she was referencing it so i had to go get it here we go I didn't even remove the thing that was on it because I don't know why it just looks prettier 
the book is so gorgeous and then try and get closer to the light if you don't have it the book is actually genuinely gorgeous okay let's find Santa Elisabetta I think it was let me see Santa Elisabetta because she's describing the photo let's just find it I hope I sincerely hope that there's a list of chapters. Yes, there is. Thank you. Where is Elisabetta? Where is she? Santa Elisabetta of the Roses, 29. Let's find her. I will show you. Oh, I opened her on the first try. I never thought this would happen. I'm going to flip the camera around and then I'm going to show you. I'm not sure if that's like <laughs> cheating a little because if you don't have the book but I honestly respect the fact that you might not have the book I only bought it because I'm a massive fan so I think it's fair that I show it to you because you're already reading the book through me I think you deserve to see what I see so let me just flip you around here we have it Santa Elisabetta it's a couple pages I think not that long but anyway that's what she looks like the bleeding into the flowers it's so cool to actually see it now that I'm reading it I think this will enhance my experience it's kind of cool to be holding the book that Alina is holding it kind of makes me feel like I'm part of the story but yeah here is the picture for anyone who doesn't have the book and they wondered what it looked like why does my hair look so bad I remember when Zoya was the classic bitch <laughs> like she is right now like fake and rude and snobby and fake hugging Alina. Why does my hair look so bad? I love Zoya though because I've read actually the rest of the books but she's so bitchy in the beginning. I was so scared she would become the cliche character but I love her. I grew to love her so much and the relationship she had and developed with Alina as they both became better people. So I will go through this this part of the bitchiness but I can't wait until I will actually be happy that she's here and not just annoyed because I feel like I'm reading Mean Girls. I'm supposed to be so satisfied because of this, but the fact that she came out of the Darkling's rooms crying. I'm not sure how he disciplines them, but it does bring me a little bit of satisfaction. I mean, she broke her damn ribs. She really is a bitch in the beginning. That's why it's satisfying to see her development. But I hate it when petty, jealous characters literally kick the shit out of the MC just because they're special or have the Darkling's eyes on them, if we should say it so. But yeah, just like Marie says, she can't bear the idea of anyone being, being the Darkling's favorite. Grow up, get a grip of yourself, please. You're gonna be such a strong character. Please stop doing this, though. Yeah, very soon because I'm annoyed. I know you're gonna be better, but I'm annoyed. I can't help it. I can't. I hate it. I hate just being bitchy jealous. I know it happens in real life, but for some reason it's so annoying in fiction. So we are definitely commenting on when she goes to Bagra and the Darkling is there. I am going to microanalyze every single sentence here. The Darkling was standing by Bagra's tile oven, his face furious. I love the fact that despite being a, a thousand years old, one conversation with his mother makes him emotional enough that rage is clear on his face. I'm pretty sure they've mastered being emotionless and not displaying anything they don't want to display over all that time, but his mother. It's his mother! And like how he tries to be nice to her. And he bows, but Bagra's probably like, why are you bullshitting, boy? Just, I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> She's, <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> She's fine. Who did Bagra? She's fine. She cannot light a hallway, but she's fine. <laughs> oh, I love it so much. To my surprise, the Darkling said, leave her be. Bagra's eyes narrowed. You'd like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> the Darkling sighed and ran his hands through his hair, through his dark hair in exasperation. That's, I mean, it's totally a dynamic of mother and son. And it's clear. When you know it, it's obvious. <laughs> He's defending her. 
partly because he wants to get into her good graces, but also because he probably just wants to spite Bagra. <laughs> and he's only this petty when he's with his mother, and I love it so much. I'm imagining, I'm imagining Ben Barnes actually being so brought down by Madame Hooch, and I'm loving it. I'm loving it. It's perfect. There was a rueful smile on his lips, and his hair was going every which way. He totally looks like a little boy. I am imagining it like that. Don't patronize me, boy! Her voice cracked out like a whip. To my amazement, I saw the Darkling stand up straighter and then scowl as if he'd caught himself. Don't chide me, old woman, he said in a low, dangerous voice. It's so obvious that they're family. You don't behave like this with anyone other than family. I would be suspicious of it as soon as I saw that he sat up straighter when she talks to him. Like, the Darkling would never do that just for a creepy old woman that trains the new Grisha. Like, no way would he do that. Why did she not connect? That's probably the thing that annoys me the most. How did she not connect the dots? You just need to see this interaction and it's so obvious, so obvious. He sits up straighter when she barks at him. He would never do that for anyone other than his family. I am so angry right now, it's so obvious. It's so, so obvious. <laughs> And she's like, what? What had I walked into? You had walked into a family argument. <laughs> and I still can't believe you didn't connect two and two. I understand you're a child and you're new to this. And you didn't have a family, so maybe that's why you can't tell. But you've been with the Darkling long enough to realize that he would not behave like a schoolboy with his mother. If it was not his kin. Because seriously, he sits, stands straighter. Classic, beautiful, perfect. <laughs> the boy thinks to get you an amplifier, she said. What do you think of that, girl? It was so strange to hear the Darkling called boy. Again. How is she not immediately thinking they're related? I think it's brilliant, I exclaimed more loudly than I'd intended. Bagra made a disgusted sound. <laughs> the Darkling gave her a sharp glance, but then he returned to me. Alina, have you ever heard of Morozova's herd? <laughs> of course she has. She's also heard of unicorns and the Shuhan dragons. Bagra said mockingly. An angry look passed over the Darkling's features, but then he seemed to master himself. He's losing his cool so much in just this small interaction with them. Alina, I love you. I love you with all my heart, but you're so stupid here. It's so obvious. It's so damn obvious. And also how nonchalant they are. Th those are their relatives, but they're just not blinking even. <laughs> May I have a word with you, Alina? Of course, she stammered. Bagra snorted. Bagra snorted. I love this dramatically chaotic ancient family more than anything and I will die on that hill <laughs> I can't wait to see this in the show the more I read the more I realize I'll be very angry if they cut a lot of this out which I realize they have to especially considering we're getting eight episodes mixed with six of crows but I don't want them to cut anything out I need all of these interactions actually to see them. I need them because they're precious. <laughs> I need to see them and I will be very offended if they're cut out. I understand but I'd be offended. Nothing to comment but it's been like two sentences. Give me a minute. Then they leave and when we had walked a short distance down the path he heaved a huge sigh and ran his hands through his hair again. That woman he muttered. It was hard not to laugh. What? He said warily. Wearily. I've just never seen you so ruffled. Bagda has that effect on people. Was she your teacher too? A shadow crossed his face. Yes, he said. Mm. Oh, she was his teacher, all right. She, The fact that she was his teacher was basically his doom. It's just so beautiful to reread this. I remember 
loving it the first time but this is the sort of book that I'm glad I'm rereading because all the little hints and messages and hidden meanings are so much greater when you've consumed all that you can consume about the world all the side stories and all the stuff especially language of thorns it just makes it so much cooler and I am loving it so this is where he kisses her though isn't it when they're walking by the lake it's where he kisses her I remember first time I watched it I was so caught off guard they're just talking and she hears him laugh for the first time and then he kisses her I remember him being shocked by it too but I was just I need to I needed to put the book down for a minute and just be like this was so random. I don't like random kissing scenes usually, but I was just, okay, I need to take a moment <laughs> and continue. Afterwards, after that, he pretty much acts like a horny teenager, which I found also very funny. But considering that she's a teenager, I mean, it was a good tactic, Darkles, so fair enough. My favorite description of him, though, because... Just like everything else, after 150 pages, it's just so shocking. More shocking than the kiss, even, when she, she's like, In Anakuya's stories, they could talk, and if a hunter ca captured them and spared their life, they granted wishes. He laughed then. It was the first time I'd ever heard his laugh, a lovely dark sound that rippled through the air. Well, that part definitely isn't true. Oh, that's his family, and he was there when the original story started. The fact that he laughs... I'm imagining him a lovely dark sound that rippled through the air. I don't know why, but every time there's a character that doesn't laugh or smile, nothing can make me swoon more than them smiling and shocking someone into silence just because they never heard their laugh. Now that's a trope I can get behind. That's why I always like characters like that because you feel like the laughter and the smiles are earned. <laughs> like after 150 pages, and half smiles and quirking lips, he finally laughs and it's beautiful. I, I mean, now that we actually have Ben Barnes, I wonder how they will do it, but nothing will ever compare to the first time that I read this and I felt little flutters when he laughs for the first time, almost like I heard it in my mind. I'm just that sort of reader, I guess. I can feel everything like it's very real, if that makes sense. It's not the scene where he kisses her, but it's the scene that we have already heard. The one line that we have already heard and I finally reached it. He laughed again and I felt a pleasant flush creep up my cheeks. Then his expression became serious. I've been waiting for you a long time, Alina, he said. You and I are going to change the world. And when he looked at me with those gray quartz eyes, my heart gave a little thump. Get in line, Alina, because you and me both. <laughs> Like mother, like son, it would seem. She tells Bagra she, she is sick of her. With her head cocked to one side and her eyes glittering black in the firelight, she looked like a very mean sparrow. <laughs> New clothes, a soft bed, hot food at every meal, the chance to be the Darkling's pet. I'm not his pet, but you want to be, she jeered. Don't bother lying to me. You're the same as all the rest. I saw the way you looked at him. A thousand girls would sell their own mothers to be in your shoes, and yet here you are, miserable and sulking like a child. So tell me, girl, what is your sad little heart pining for? And that's and then that oddly inspirational quote. There's nothing wrong with being a lizard, either, unless you were born to be a hawk. I mean, I'm sorry, Bagra, but if you didn't want people to like your son, you should have taught him to be less vain. I know it's useful for him to be pretty, but it's your own fault. That is your own child and you created the monster, so I don't think you have the right to talk. And I find it lovely, though, how she realizes that she's been pushing down the light because she wanted to stay with Mal. He was the only thing that she ever knew. 
And as soon as she realizes that, she begins to feel more at home with her power and with her light and how she becomes like a weight was dropped from her shoulders. I love that so much. The kiss is coming soon. <laughs> I can feel it. It's just so awkward to me. So awkward. They're just walking by the lake and then he kisses her. That's the one part of YA that I never really meshed with. Even when I was younger, it was just so weird. It's like you're reading a book and enjoying your time and then suddenly there's fan fiction. Just fe just feels like that, maybe. Maybe or definitely just me. Baka is clearly doing her best so she can be independent without independent without the amplifiers. I get that. But how she's pushing her and the training, I, I, I love it so much. I love it so much. And how Aline is now a little bit more confident. And I don't know, I love the parallel of them technically starting in the same way. Alexandra and Delina. Which I'm only now realizing they start with the same initials, but never mind. They both start with Bagra and how she, the light slips from her and the Darkling just, he emerges from the shadows. <laughs> I mean, again, the banter. Look at this. You see how strong she is. I wasn't even helping her. Give her an amplifier and see what she can do. The Darkling shook his head. She'll have the stag. Bagras cowed. You're a fool. I've been called worse, often by you. This is folly. You must reconsider. The Darkling's face went cold. I must. You don't give me orders anymore, old woman. I know what has to be done. I might surprise you, I piped up. The Darkling and Bagra turned to stare at me. It was almost like they'd forgotten I was there. How is it not clear to her that they're <laughs> mother and son? It's so obvious. So obvious. Now, what I just read out, how sh they're like, <laughs> you're a fool, I've been called worse often by you. I don't think the Darkling is the kind of person who would treat his old teacher this way it's so obvious that's the one problem that i have with this is how <laughs> it's supposed to be a reveal later but it's so obvious even the first time i read it i was like he would never treat anyone this way there has to be something more to this like no way no way how he's spiting her and like contradicting her on purpose <laughs> And he's mad when she commands him because he's like, you've been my up my ass for the last thousand years. Leave me alone. <laughs> and how he's rude to her for the first time, probably. Ah, so she's not as stupid as she looks, cackled Bagra, leave us, said the Darkling with surprising ferocity. We we'll all suffer for your pride, boy. I won't ask you again. Bagra gave him a disgusted glover, is that how you say it, then turned on her heel and marched back up the path to her cottage. <laughs> and as soon as she slams her door, the Darkling relaxes and he looks nicer, like, Alina, my honey, my, my baby girl, please... Please use your brain because <laughs> you could have... And I didn't realize how long she'd been here if all of autumn and winter she was there. Alina, my honey. <laughs> You've been with them long enough. Please connect the dots. She's like that meme from BuzzFeed Unsolved. I've connected the dots. You didn't connect shit. I've connected them. <laughs> like, you, you didn't connect shit. He is gonna kiss her this time, though. I'm pretty sure. <clears throat> I don't think you're useless, Lena. I know. <laughs> At least she is still confident. No, Grisha is powerful enough to face the fold. Not even me. Well, technically, as we will discover, you can go to the fold. It just wouldn't be very pleasant. <laughs> I get it, but you don't like it. Should I? If I can't help you destroy the fold, then what exactly am I good for? Midnight picnics? Keeping your feet warm in the winter? I can't with this girl. Despite her slight stupidity <laughs> in seeing two and two, I love her. His mouth quirked up in a half smile again. Midnight picnics?
Maybe Bagra's right, as much as I hate to admit it. I cocked my head to one side. You never seemed phased by anything. Why do you let her bother you so much? I don't know. Well, I think she's good for you. He started in surprise. Why? Because she's the only one around here who isn't scared of you or constantly trying to impress you. And how he starts in surprise, he's like, why do you think she's good for me? And that's what she will tell him later. She will feel that Bagra is the only one who's actually still good for him. It all connects, and I love it so much. This line, this piece of dialogue will definitely be proved later because Bagra will be the only one that he genuinely cares about. Are you trying to impress me? Of course, I laughed. Do you always say exactly what you're thinking? Not even half the time. Then he laughed too, and I remembered how much I liked the sound. I can't help it. I vividly, I know I'm rambling. This video is going to be like an hour long. I'll try and cut it down. But I so remember reading it for the first time and genuinely hearing his laugh. She just says he laughed too, and I remembered how much I liked the sound, and I was just, yes, me too. For some reason, me too. I can hear it. What's Bagger's power anyway, I asked. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure, he said. I think she was a tide maker. No one around here is old enough to remember. <sighs> tide maker, sure. I mean, fair enough, fair enough. I just love the Morozova so much. That's the conclusion. That's the conclusion of the story. The damn minute. Winter drew to a close. How long was Alina here? It might seem long to me now, but how long was she there? At least six months, if not more. That makes it even weirder how little of an interaction she had with Alexander. If she saw him like three or four times in the course of seven-ish months just makes it weirder and, the f and worse because the fact that Bagra waited that long to warn her yeah I get it because she didn't know that he would find the stack but I mean honey you should have definitely warned her sooner because the possibility of him finding the stag and because you know it exists and he's even more motivated now that Alina is a thing you should have warned her sooner and the fact that she still didn't con connect the dots. I can't. I will never let it go that she can't figure out that they're related. Because it's so blatantly obvious. But anyway, I didn't know she was there for that long. That means that she was actually apart from Mal for a really long time without the letters that she wasn't getting because, because Genya was hiding them. But I actually don't have that much of the book left because now when she realizes... I'm on, almost on page 200. Now that she realizes the Darkling is who he is... They run away, they found, they find the stag, and then it's the last showdown. Which is actually very soon. This book is just, unfortunately, so short. It just flies by. But after that, when I stop rambling, I'm going to read the Genya story. That's uh, at the end of my paperback. I'm going to read the Genya story and comment on that because I read it only once and I don't remember anything about it. And then I will wrap up my thoughts. I'm not sure if I will finish it tonight, but I might as, might as well because I've just gone through 180 pages in a very short span of time and I don't sleep anymore, so. When Bagra's making fun of her, dreaming of dancing with your dark prince, that dark prince is your son and your fault, Bagra. Please stop being so rude. I love you with all my heart, but stop being so rude. It's your fault. All of it is your fault. The fact that he's attractive and has an attitude as he does, it's all your fault. And I know you acknowledge it, but... Have you seen the way he looks? <laughs> of course she's dreaming of being with her dark prince. I know what he's like even I am dreaming of it. Like, please calm down. I think is related to the Genya story because if I remember correctly, she has an interaction with the Darkling in that. After a moment, she said softly, we all feel it, you know. Feel what? The pull towards the Darkling, but he's not like us, Alina. Like us, Alina. I tensed. Genya kept her gaze studiously focused on the coils of my hair. What do you mean? I asked. Even to my own ears, my voice sounded unnaturally high. His kind of power, the way he looks. You'd have to be mad or blind not to notice it. 
Has he ever? I mean, have you and he ever? No, never. A mischievous smile twitched on her lips, but I would. Really? Who wouldn't? <laughs> Genya is just spilling the tea left and right. She's literally like, don't worry, Alina, you're not special. Everyone thinks he's hot. I mean, who wouldn't get with him? And frankly, thank you, Genya, for finally speaking the truth. <laughs> because in stories, it's always like they're mysteriously attractive and hot, but no one would ever go near him. Genya's just like, he's clearly attractive and powerful. Who wouldn't tap that? <laughs> And we stand her for that. They have a very interesting relationship, in my opinion, Genya and the Darkling. A very, very interesting relationship. Almost, almost, if it was more explored, more interesting than Alina and the Darkling. Because Genya actually grew to be with him for a long time and grew to respect him and have loyalty for him. It was all a bit complex, but I do love their dynamic. I'm just imagining fan art. I can't but not imagine fan art with anyone in the Darkling in it. I need all of the fan art I can consume. Now I'm definitely off my point. <laughs>